everybody, Karen Roby here for Tech Republic and ZDNet, joined today by Jen Jones. He's the Chief Marketing Officer for Data Miner. Thanks for being with us here today, Jen. Thank you. These are some uh, crazy times, of course, that we are in right now as companies, individuals, all of us just trying to figure out how to make it through this and uh, getting information is one of the most important things right now when it comes to public data, you know, whether this is uh, just to help people for different reasons, companies are needing it to make the right decisions or attempt to, uh, again, in these unprecedented times, and you guys uh, using artificial intelligence is something that uh, is really important right now. Talk a little bit about the work that you're doing. And again, uh, and then we'll get to, I should say, why right now it's really important. Yeah, absolutely. So our platform is an artificial intelligence platform that pulls information from over 10,000 public information sources, things like social media platforms or blogs, or even information center sensors like what you would get from a ship transponder or a plane transponder. So pulling all those kinds of publicly available information pieces together and detecting very early indicators of potential risks or threats or events as they're unfolding in real time across the globe. And our clients right now span from either corporate enterprises who are using us to gain early information so that they can mitigate risks very quickly and with confidence, depending on their business needs, or public sector agencies who are on the front lines dealing with the current COVID-19 crisis. They're getting very early alerts from us on breaking news so that they know where to deploy equipment and resources. In this time, uh, Jen, obviously it doesn't matter you know, what sector you're in, right? This is one of those, uh, events that affects everyone and affects every single business. It doesn't matter your size, who your customer is, we're all impacted. Yeah, absolutely. It's everything from companies or entities that are dealing with it in a firsthand basis to simply deciding when should your employees work from home? When should you close down your offices temporarily? And I think eventually we'll see the reverse of that. When do you bring employees back? When are schools opening? When is it safe to call people back? When, is, when should you give them the option versus mandating that they're back in the office? When do we all start traveling again? So it really a, a, is impacting absolutely everyone. And you know, we talk a lot about, and we, we do a lot of articles and interviews on, uh, you know, or have for a long time here on artificial intelligence and uh, the promise that it can hold, some of the issues, some of the roadblocks with artificial intelligence. Uh, but in this case, certainly uh, AI, the power of AI, uh, you know, companies can really utilize it to help make decisions, make better decisions in real time. Explain that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I think it comes down to both the speed at which events are unfolding right now and the global nature of them. So getting information as it's unfolding, really for any emerging risk, but I think it's, uh, you know, the current pandemic is a perfect example of how in critical information is. Um, knowing that you have reliable information, that you're getting it as fast as possible so that you have more time to make a decision so that you can act quickly before it's sort of um, already impacted your business or your people. Uh, so that's where I think artificial intelligence plays a really unique role because the amount, when you talk about public data, the scale is massive, right? Our platform alone, we're talking billions and billions of data units processed every single day from 10,000 plus and growing data sources. Um, so that scale is where you really need something like artificial intelligence to help. And talk a little bit about, uh, Jim, we were, before we started doing this interview, we talked about social media. Talk a little bit about how that is uh, playing a role right now when it comes to the amount of information and the type of information that's being shared. Yeah, I think social media has a really interesting role to play here. It often gets a bad reputation for propagating misinformation, which can be true. But um, if you're able to parse out and boil down what is firsthand information, which is one thing that we're able to do. So by detecting um, firsthand eyewitness accounts of what's happening and noticing the data patterns and that, separating that out from all of the viral memes of misinformation, for example. So we're only alerting on firsthand eyewitness accounts. So when you're able to boil the world of social media down to eyewitness accounts of what's actually happening, you sort of get to this really pure ground truth, which I think can be really powerful, both from the real-time nature of that and also the global perspective. So for something like COVID-19, where it's happening 
in different languages all across the globe where official reports can sometimes be slow or unreliable. Um, that ground source of truth is more critical than ever. Yeah, most definitely. And Jen, uh, you, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but talk or expand a little bit on, you know, the importance of getting that information when you talk about a, a company here, you know, to the different levels and, and across the levels of a company, how do you keep people best informed? Yeah, you know, I think it, there's something there about democratizing information. So the more people can have access to information and use it for their own needs. So in the case of a corporate client of ours, for example, um, this kind of information used to be only the domain of the security department. It was very much about risk mit mitigation and handling threats. But for something like this, we're seeing HR departments need this information, certainly if the executive team, even the board. Um, it's really about every single person that is in charge of something or someone in a company has some level of risk to mitigate here. So making sure that they can get the information that they need to analyze on their own terms with their own perspective in mind and help make decisions as quickly and accurately as possible is key. Definitely. And, uh, you know, when we talk about the kind of information that people need right now, uh, you know, in light of COVID-19 and the crisis that we're in here, so much of it in the beginning was just to, to find out, you know, what's going on with schools closing and, and when businesses should close yeah. doors and things like that. But looking ahead, uh, if you will, as you mentioned, that opening back up and the process of what that will look like uh, that's a great deal of information that that you guys will be processing and, and trying to disseminate. So talk a little bit about what that will look like. Yeah, that's actually sort of where my head's been at the last few days. Maybe it's just trying to look ahead to what, what the next normal looks like. Um, but we know, you know, we're going to be in this temporary state for a while. But as every single region hits their apex and, you know, for successfully flattening the curve stays there for a little bit and then it eventually starts to decline. We're all going to have to make our own decisions, both at the government level, at the local level, at uh, for each individual uh, company. Even going to have to decide what makes sense for them. When are with when are they reopening offices that they closed? When are employees traveling again? When are we bringing people back for large scale sporting events and concerts and conferences? Um, and that's going to really depend on individual risk uh, tolerance levels, uh, what the area is like. And I think that's where information as we sort of come down the other side of the curve is going to be really critical. And then, of course, keeping an eye on things, because I'm sure many of, of us have all heard about the likelihood of a second wave or another blip of an outbreak. So how can you be ready for that and plan for that? You know, learning from what we all learned this first time around and be ready to quickly reenact those policies, hopefully for a shorter time and more temporarily. And, and sometimes just separating fact from fiction, that seems to be one of the, you know, the hardest things at a time like this. And people are, again, social media sharing things that aren't, uh, you know, always true. And, and that content, you really have to scrub down sometimes to find out what, what's really going on. Uh, Jim, we certainly appreciate you being uh, here with us today. And well, and, it, and it's good sometimes and maybe that's a psychological thing of looking forward. I am in my head thinking, you know, when that time comes that we can start to look to, to reopen schools or businesses and, and, and get back to somewhat of a normal uh, way of life would be something certainly that we're all very much looking forward to. <laughs> Definitely look, looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, well guys, uh, we thank you for watching, of course, here today. Much more information uh, can be found as always on Tech Republic and ZDNet. We appreciate you watching.